the 4070 Ti Super is here. So let's see how it stacks up against the card it's replacing and how it compares to the AMD 7900 XT. Now, last year, we got this, the 4070 Ti, which was not looking very impressive to most people, mostly due to it only giving you 12 gigs of VRAM on an $800 card. Well, now it looks like Nvidia is out to right its wrongs from last year with this update, putting it on a cut down version of the 4080 GPU die. We are seeing a 10% increase in cores, a slight increase to our base clock speeds, and now being on a larger 256 bit bus, along with a 33% increase in VRAM and bandwidth. Now the pricing has not changed, so we will have to see how many of these cards will actually stay at MSRP with no founder's card to hold the line. The one that Nvidia sent me to review is the Asus Tough Edition, and it is at that $800 MSRP. I wanted to get firsthand experience with the card, so I made a new 14900K test bench and put the cards head to head across a few games. Now, Nvidia has been positioning this as a high refresh rate 1440p card, so that's where I wanted to start to see what kind of performance that we can actually get. Twitchy esports titles are where you're going to expect to max out a high refresh rate 1440p monitor with a card like this, and it looks like it is up to the task. The finals is a slightly more demanding one when used to max out settings in 1440p with ray tracing. And yeah, I'm seeing upwards of 170 to 180 frames per second, a very good high frame rate experience. Apex Legends at 1440p in high settings was also solid as well, often hitting that 300 frame cap with plenty of headroom to bump it up to 4K if you want to, where I'm seeing around 175 to 200 frames per second. Now getting into something more demanding like The Last of Us Part 1 in 4K, this is a game that will take advantage of that increase in VRAM as it can peak at upwards of 13 gigs. So we are getting what I would consider a very playable experience here at 55 to 60 frames per second with just rasterization performance, meaning that we are not using any type of upscaling like the LSS. So if you wanted a comfortable 4K playthrough, you could definitely take advantage of those settings to have it. And then at 1440p with those same settings, I'm seeing absolutely solid performance as well, reaching an average frame rate of 110. Now, most of the numbers I'm showing here are rasterization only, because in my opinion, it's a better way to gauge the true performance differences between the cards. In these single player games, there's really no reason not to take advantage of the new features that come with the 4000 series GPUs like DLSS and frame generation. Now across three games that I'm testing, I'm seeing an average of over a hundred percent increase in frame rate. Now I would look at frame generation as an improvement to motion smoothness and not an increase in performance. Now on its own, the 4070 Ti Super is looking like a very good card. It's totally viable for high refresh rate, 1440 to be gaming, but how much of an improvement are we getting over the 4070 Ti? Now looking at F123, and this is where I'm actually seeing the smallest difference between the 4070 Ti and the Super. Running the in-game benchmark a few times here, and I'm only seeing an average of a 2.5% increase in performance. Now on the other side of that spectrum is The Last of Us Part 1, a much more VRAM intensive game where in 1440p, the 4070 Ti is trailing the Super by an average of 15 frames, around a 16% increase in performance here. Now it's looking like that increase in VRAM is is really paying off in these games that need it. Especially when you look at games like Alan Wake 2 when using the path tracing settings. So the original 4070 Ti only having 12 gigs of VRAM is really concerning for the longevity of the card, for how fast it is. When you consider that these newer games are needing more and more of it. For the most part, 12 gigs is enough for most games at 1440p and 4K. But as you can see with some of these newer games like The Last of Us, Hogwarts Legacy, Alan Wake 2, and more, we are starting to hit that limit and it's not leaving us with any headroom for future titles. So this bump to 16 gigs is a very needed upgrade. This also helps if you're are wanting to use the card for productivity tasks, if you want to use it for video editing or working with complex scenes in Blender, that extra memory is going to be very useful for you. So AMD's 7900 XT has 20 gigs of VRAM, which is really nice to have on the surface, but something to note is having more VRAM doesn't really help the performance if you don't need it. So running out is a bad thing, but having over what's needed doesn't help your performance. In straight rasterization gaming performance, the 7900 XT and the 4070 Ti Super are trading blows across the games that I've tested. 
tested. Now, I personally would go with the 4070 Ti Super over it, but that's just because you don't get DLSS and Nvidia's implementation of frame generation on the AMD cards. Those are just features that I personally use a lot. Now, I have seen some hope online that the 4070 Ti would be like an $800 4080, mostly due to its cut down version of the GPU die. I certainly didn't have that expectation myself. I think the 4080 Super is going to be the obvious less expensive 4080, because on paper, that's looking like it might have equivalent performance at $200 less. And yeah, the 4070 Ti Super is definitely not that. It sits in between the original 4070i and the 4080 in terms of performance, which I don't find to be surprising at all. Now, the idea here is to completely replace the 4070i with the Super version. So once those are sold out, they're gonna be gone. Overall, yeah, I think that this is a win. It's not a massive jump in performance or anything, but it still is a slight increase in performance with a lot more VRAM at the same price. Now, of course, I would have loved to see a price decrease like what we're seeing with the 4080 to 4080 Super, but I still think that this is a much better product than the 4070 Ti was last year. The sentiment I've seen online is that this is what the 4070 Ti should have been, and I do agree with that. I'm happy we've got it now, as it's going to make this card last a lot longer than the previous 4070 Ti for higher resolution gaming and creation work, and at least at the same price. Anyway, these are just my thoughts after spending a few days with the card. I'm curious to see what you guys think about it. Do you think that this is a step in the right direction? If you don't already have a 4000 series card, is this one that you would consider? Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.